ひらがなチェックカタカナチェック漢字何 Welcome to another episode of Learn Japanese with Cyber Bunny. 私の名前はサイバーバニーです。今日のレッスンもよろしくね。In this video, I like to dissect what exactly is kanji. Here are some topics and feel free to skip to them. But first, I like to thank Calgary Language Nurse for sponsoring this video. Take it away! Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Azrin, aka Azrin the Language Nerd. We teach eight different foreign languages, Japanese being one of them. Our tutors are all very friendly, very experienced, and you are sure to not only learn a lot, but also enjoy our classes. I hope to see you soon! Alright, back to the video. First of all, just relax. <sighs> Let's have a quick review. Hiragana are phonetic syllables that complement the kanji. They are in between the kanji characters. Katakana are foreign loan words that are used in Western names, Western concepts, and sometimes Japanese names and brands. Kanji came from China. Kan is han. Ji is word. Okay, true or false? Kanji are like pictographs. False. Not every kanji is a pictograph. In fact, there aren't too many of these pictographs. The easier kanji, or basic elements, otherwise known as radicals, are combined to form new concepts as you advance. By JLPT N4, you will notice it will no longer look like pictographs anymore. Remember, kanji goes by a logographic system, meaning that each block or kanji has its own vocabulary. This is where it gets challenging, and most people start learning Spanish at this point and give up. But not you! Why? Why do we need kanji? It's so hard to memorize everything! I feel your pain. Kanji is so important because if we spell everything out in hiragana, it's a little bit difficult to know what that person is talking about. For example, 来週の土曜日には友達に With kanji, it helps break up the words in organized pieces of information. It's too hard to read with just straight hiragana. To meet versus to correct. Atteru and atteru. Kanji. Kanji. Both pronounce the same, different characters, different meanings. And that's why we need kanji. Kanji? そんな感じ。漢字 rules you need to know they'll make your life a lot better。漢字 do not require spaces。it's basically a long run on sentences with the occasional comma。if you're a dancer on tiktok or just a dancer in general。i have something for you。i think of 漢字 like a dance choreography。five dance moves equals one tiktok video。that one tiktok video is one 漢字。If you can do all of those dance moves in that order, congratulations! You just made a choreography or a kanji. Kanji are grouped by a maximum of five radicals. The brain can learn up to five things, so that's why there's a maximum of five. How can we study kanji? What is the best way and method? Study the radicals itself. The positions of these radicals and the stroke orders. The worst thing that you can do is memorizing the whole character itself. Memorize in parts. Grouping method. This one is totally up to you and how you want to do it. You can group by radicals, related meanings, shapes, positions. Create a system that works for you. There is kunyomi and onyomi. And yes, you need to know both. Kunyomi, or meaning reading, is the Japanese adaptation they had to modify to fit their spoken language. Onyomi is sound based reading. This has an original Chinese meaning with a similar sound, meaning that kanji is read in a similar way as it would in the Chinese language. Focus on what's important. You don't have to memorize everything, you don't have to be perfect. Not all multiple readings are used, so just memorize the important ones to learn kanji efficiently. Stroke order is very important. Start from the top, then to the bottom, left, then right. 
I guess, left to write in your case. I have made a song about up, down, left, right. So go check it out. Up, down, left, right. Come on, won't you sing with me? Ue, shika, hidari, migi. Ue, shika, hidari, migi. Start with 100 most common kanji list. This is JLPTN5 level. I'll put down some links below that you can check out. You'll learn how to write these ones very quickly. But the catch is, the more simple the kanji is, the more readings it has. Yeah. Study kanji with vocab. The true meaning of kanji comes out when you understand it in context. You can memorize all the different readings, but the real test is can you read it when it's in a sentence? Can we survive without kanji? Yes and no. If you can memorize 2000 characters that are commonly used, you should be good. You can survive Japan, you can read regular general documents. Yeah. This is where most people get scared and fail. It's the number of characters and it really overwhelms them. If Japanese preteens can do this, so can you. In my first year of living in Japan, it was such a struggle. I only knew basic, like first grade elementary. I had the help of some apps to, you know, the ones that you take a picture and it translates for you. Yeah, that can only help you so much. Now I can do at least third grade level kanji and I'm practicing every single day, any moment that I can. Um, I film a lot, I make content a lot, so, but I do have a lot of free time on my way to work during my commute, so I use uh, Ling app and Nihongo Master um, just because it's very easily accessible on my phone. Some of my American coworkers did not speak an ounce of Japanese. They did not know how to read, they did not know how to like ask for things, but they were able to survive. So I guess, so yeah, you can survive. It's just gonna be a struggle. And you know, I think you will face some kind of discrimination among the Japanese people because you're not, you're not making the effort to learn. I, I have no idea how, but it is possible to survive Japan without learning anything, any Japanese at all. Not recommended, but it's possible. Here are some tools and resources that have helped me um, throughout my Japanese learning journey. I do want to give another shout out to Calgary Language Nerds. Hey everyone, how's it going? Azrin the Language Nerd here. It's also changing the dynamic for groups like the Calgary Language Nerds, shifting from meeting in person to learning with thousands around the world. It also helps in terms of uh, opening your eyes as to how other cultures are and how they view the world in comparison to how you view the world. And it gives you a little bit more of an, op at least for me, it gives me a little bit more of an open mind, I, I find. And learning with others is crucial, even more so now that the Calgary Distress Center is seeing its largest spike ever for loneliness and isolation related calls. So that connection with one another, regardless of what that looks like, is so important to allow us to be able to keep moving through this and to not be so alone in what we're going through. I could never have done this without the pandemic. So for some people, it's a blessing, right? Mark Villani, CTV News, Calgary. This is very helpful if you need a private online tutor and you don't have like a Japanese senpai around. They are only accepting 20 students at the moment, so I hope that you can be one of them. Or at least attend his free classes on Sunday evenings, Canada time. I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much for your support and watching all my music videos and singing along with me um, and watching my, my shorts, my YouTube shorts. As always, take care and I'll see you soon. Ja, matane! Bye bye!